What's up everybody, it's Critical, and I want to talk about something genuinely important today. So one thing that I've done for pretty much my whole life is I try and see what's wrong with the world. I see what's broken, and I never have a solution to fix it because I know there's jack shit I can do to actually fix these big issues. I'm just a normal man with two nipples, I jerk off sometimes, sometimes I don't jerk off. I'm not in a position of power or a position where I can actually make a difference in these issues. But I do like to talk about them sometimes, like when I talked about the college textbook scam last month. I like to bring these issues to your attention so that way it'll make you all think and maybe some of you will view them as a big issue as well, and maybe even have a solution to them. So, the issue I want to talk about today is the false positive field drug test that the police use. Now this isn't going to be some big fuck the police titty fist or anything, I just wanted to talk about this field drug test that they use and how unreliable it is. So let me give you the gist of how this goes. If you get pulled over by a police officer and he has any suspicion that there's drugs in your car, up oh, he sees a flashlight on your passenger seat. Up, oh, sir, is there cocaine in that flashlight? I'm gonna have to put my penis in there to find out. If it comes out with powder, I'm gonna be very suspicious. And then they'll ask to search your car, and if you don't give them your consent, most of the time they'll bring out a canine unit to sniff around your car for the presence of drugs. You don't need me to tell you how unreliable that shit is. There's a reason Clifford only played with friends and family in the TV show and wasn't at around sniffing drugs in fucking trap houses or through cars. These these dogs aren't Jason Bourne. You can train them all you want, but they're, they're not going to be able to detect drugs accurately. It's not the fucking supermen of canine species here that have x-ray cocaine sniffing vision. But regardless, a lot of the times the dogs will start barking and clawing at a door or whatever, which immediately gives the offer officers the right to search the vehicle. Then from that point, the officers are obligated to test any substance they find there, whether it be a food crumb or your cum, they're going to test it. And the way they test for it is they take the substance, they drop it into a little pouch, and then they break an ampule or a series of ampules, and then depending on what color the solution turns, it either detected the presence of a drug or it didn't. And these tests blow elephant anus. It would be more accurate if you tested the presence of a drug by measuring how long the person can hold a handstand for. It's just so fucking awful. So let's dive right into this shit. They use a multitude of different tests for these, but I'll just pick out the biggest ones, the most common ones. For marijuana, the biggest one is a test developed in 1972 called the Thornton and Nakamura Protocol, which has, since its inception, been proven many times to be inaccurate. There's only one study validating this in any regard, and all that study basically said is their test would be able to distinguish marijuana from other drugs, so if you drop some dank kush into their test, it will say, yes, that is some loud, noisy, weed kush marijuana, it's not cocaine or meth. So if you've got a fucking monkey's fist worth of weed in your fucking test pouch, it will tell you that yes, that is marijuana. It is wildly inaccurate in any other scenario. So why do they use it then? Why has it become the gold standard? Because it is so cheap to administer. All of the field drug tests they administer are anywhere from 2 to $10. And the general public doesn't know how inaccurate they are. They don't know how bad those tests are, so no one's really up in arms about all these false positives. The test they use for cocaine is they break an ampule of cobalt thiocyanate, and that will turn blue when exposed to cocaine. But the problem is, that shit will turn smurf skin blue in the presence of Tylenol or Mucinex or a plethora of other very common materials and foods. So that shit is just useless. And there's another fundamental problem with using the changing of colors as the end-all be-all for drug convictions. That shit is subjective. It is up to the officer's discretion if it really is a positive or not. And there's a lot of things at play. If it's really sunny out, that's going to change their perception of the color. If it's really dark out, that's going to change the perception. Their flashing lights will do that as well. There is so many things at play that it's just impossible to get accurate readings of the color. So that shouldn't be used. But with 1.2 million people a year getting arrested on illegal drug possession, a lot of those come from these field drug test results, and it is the end-all be-all. If you get that positive, you're going to have some repercussions. Uh, of the people who do get tried on these results, most of them accept a plea deal, which fucks them. A lot of them go to jail, which obviously fucks them. And now I know a lot of you are asking, what's the point? Why would they be going to jail for something so trivial? And the answer is pretty simple. The prison system is a multi-billion dollar industry. And the more people they lock up, the more money they get. That's not some conspiracy, that's genuinely how it works. And drugs are an easy target. People who use them, drug addicts, they are the easiest target to just throw in jail. Because no one bats an eye when a drug, t when a drug addict goes to jail. No one thinks, damn, they probably should have gotten help instead of going to jail. That would have been a more logical 
situation. Even families turn on their own children if they find out they're drug addicts. They're like, yep, fuck. Turns out Rutherford was a drug addict. He deserves to be behind bars. Instead of reflecting, you know, maybe it's my fault as a parent for not being there for him and reaching out and trying to get him help. So by going after drugs, they have this very good cushion that they can use so there's no really backlash. Yep, this person tested positive for drugs there. They deserve to be in jail, right? And society will be like, yep, drug addict, he had drugs, deserves to be in jail. That's generally the consensus because people associate drug addicts with bad people instead of people who just need help. So they can prey on that all day long. So far I've kind of just wanted to give a general overview of everything and now I want to get more specific on the field drug tests that they administer that ruin people. So this video is from the Marijuana Policy Project and they state that 70% of the time these field drug tests give a false positive. That's worse than a coin flip. That's like flipping the coin, catching it, and then wiping your ass with it and then just saying heads or tails. It is abysmal. And then they demonstrate just how shitty these tests are. So they opened the bag and just filled it with air. It was a completely empty bag with just air in it. They did the test and it tested positive for the substance. They put Tylenol PM in the cocaine test. Tylenol PM tested positive for being cocaine. Every single chocolate bar tests positive for marijuana. And the list goes on and on and on. There is so many cases. A man had a Jolly Rancher tested from his car and it tested positive for meth. Another man was thrown in jail because they tested sugar from his car and it tested positive for cocaine. These aren't isolated incidents or flukes. You can do them yourself. These tests are so fucking cheap. You can just go to Toys R Us and get Barbie's first drug test pouch and it'd be just as accurate as the ones they're using. And these chemistry jokes ruin people's lives. And I'm not blaming the officers for it. I really genuinely don't think they know how bad these tests are. But these tests absolutely demolish a person's life. They will be outcasted by their family if they don't go to jail. If they do go to jail, well then I don't even need to tell you how fucked they are. If they do a plea deal, they are still super duper fucked. There is no winning if you get a false positive, and you are more likely, way more likely to get a false positive than an accurate reading. I don't want to get into any statistics about how many innocent people are behind bars right now because of these false positives, or how many people have been turbo ass blasted by these field drug tests. So I'm just going to put links to the sources that I've used in the description of this video, so that way you can read more about it yourself if you're curious. So yeah, I mean, there's really no more scientific testing that can be done to prove how bad these tests are. It's kind of scientific fact that these suck shit. So I think really the only thing now that will fix it is if people actually start making a big hubbub about how awful these drug tests are and that they shouldn't be used. So that's kind of why I made this. I just wanted to talk about the issue and bring it to light and hopefully raise some awareness about the problem. And yeah, that's about it. See ya.